So if I can have one question, uh, it was uh, regarding the, you know that this is a very fast moving field. So how are you going? What is the process through which you are going to update the curriculum uh, or the models? <laughs> Good question, how to update, how to live with the big swings in industry. First of all, we did update it right now. Mm -hmm. So we are up to date. And then we have this uh, future team or this future sensor. That's a group of people who really has to spot new developments uh, and build it into the uh, training. Although we are quite aware of the fact not, not every gimmick has to be transported right into training, but things that really uh, are novel and perhaps uh, helpful in the drug development process. And we do have a short list of uh, training activities that we may want to go into, you know, time and uh, budget uh, uh, provided, namely into translational medicine adapted to pharmaceutical industry, elements of uh, clinical uh, research, um, maybe also, you know, totally new aspects. And the, um, the best of my dreams <laughs> would be that we use the platform that we are all working on in a strongly harmonized or standardized way for a training a la carte. We will have new people in industry, people who have their distinct gaps in training competencies. And once we have this uh, systematic pan-European catalog of training, I think we probably could train everybody de novo with these existing uh, modules that are being provided now by IMI INT training. That's what Mike Hartman was also uh, talking uh, about. We have not reached this quality and level of collaboration and training, but very clearly if we do it in a, in a collaborative way, <laughs> Um, among the different ENT uh, projects, I think this will be coming uh, as a, a low-hanging fruit from this whole activity. Uh, Fritz, but I, I think the quality monitoring system you have is uh, central to your program and would also be central for, to uh, 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 use across all ENT topics. Can you, ex uh, can you describe that in more detail, the quality monitoring system? Yes, it's in principle, it's a threefold pyramid. There is a quality management control organization, which is actually work package eight. There's one work package focusing on quality management, not only in the program, but in all the courses in principle. And there is a second layer of national organizations we are in the happy situation that in pharmaceutical medicine, drug development sciences, in these integrated courses, we, we do have this IFOP structure behind it. The International Federation of Associations of Pharmaceutical Physicians. Uh, and we carved out the European part that this European Federation of course providers in pharmaceutical medicine, and they will play a national act. Now, quite honestly, I would like to link this up with the UFEPS organization, which also have a, a national organization within their European uh, grouping, uh, so we could economize on the uh, quality management and, and the control. And the lowest level of this uh, quality management system is unidirectional. In other words, all courses, all modules uh, from the uh, conception of the module, content, execution, uh, uh, assignments after the module, the introduction to the module by an e-product, we do introduce all the, the modules by an e-product, that all will be controlled by on-site. And on-site there has to be a quality control report sent to the um, organization, to work package eight. So with this three level, in a very simple way, and we also feel economical way, uh, we can do um, uh, succinct uh, quality management and control uh, on the entire program. And by the way, the entire uh, quality management system is also in accordance with uh, European standards. We did not go for the uh, ICO, new uh, kind of uh, quality control, 1900, it's called, 
we wanted to make it user friendly, but actually all we do is in conformity with what the European Union prescribes. Fritz, if I may ask regarding the master degree, uh, if I understood right, um, being student within your program, I can pick bits and pieces from various institutions or universities. Now, what, what is the institution that awards the master degree, or is it a, a joint degree? Because it's not so free as you might think. Because you do have to do uh, some 60-70% of your activity at the same site. That's the leading university, that's the university providing the master title at the end of the day, the accreditation or accrediting university. However, there is more flexibility to this in reality because once it has been agreed upon that the um, contributive university is a partner university in the system, that uh, there may be more flexibility and in particular mobility. But the essence is that of the 12 modules, two modules, uh, you can really choose freely from any other eligible or uh, elective uh, module. Now these elective modules are not only site controlled or provided, but can be provided throughout the pharma train program or throughout, and that's now the fascination, the entire IMI E&T project. And that's why we need shared inclusion, exclusion criteria, quality control uh, of this um, catalog, as you call it, or this platform overall. Now, you know, how far mobility will really uh, be practiced in Europe, I simply don't know. I mean, mobility would uh, basically uh, request a very stringent content of these modules. And I'm not sure that you can force the different universities with all their uh, cultures into one system that you have to do it exactly that way. So it's becoming completely interchangeable and thereby uh, mobility would be guaranteed for these uh, people. Now, I also do not believe that um, mobility should be hindered by some variability or variety of different uh, approaches. And let's face it, this training market, and in particular the e-product market, will become a new market in Europe that has not existed before, which means that the best will survive, survive and those who do not perform so well will go under. That's how it is in industry. I might have a last question, which is uh, really um, doing with the Lisbon agenda, and how do you see this education and training program helping um, students to go to the market and have possibility to access to the industry, jobs, or anything like that. Is there something which will facilitate that at the end of the, um, how do you say, the, the curriculum, or how do you see that? I do not have a standard answer no. to that, <laughs> and um, I'm not really uh, sort of representing uh, pharma train in this respect, but I believe that we are setting up a new training quality, and thereby quality of people. And that people who do have this quality and have passed the examinations and have this master degree or whatever diploma in their pockets will have an advantage on the market. Now, your question, uh, I think, is extremely important, but we have not thought this right away through. If these diplomas or master programs or whatever titles we create, specialists, would have a role in the regulation process, i.e. only a person who does have the IMI European specialist for regulation, blah, 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 safety, etc., can sign part of the NDA process uh, that is being um, you know, turned over to EMA, then this would be a, a tremendous uh, driver of quality training and the quality of uh, competence that people develop. We have started this discussion actually with regulators, but that would mean um, a change in law, basically. But, um, well, I can only encourage IMIJU to think along these lines. We will certainly come back with this uh, issue because the, the real um, amplifier of uh, practical quality competence will come through a major meaning of the training 
in the drug development and regulation process per se.